Discussion in Galatians. So, we're learning that Paul is saying that it's important for us to walk by the Spirit of God. The word flesh and spirit that are used here quite frequently. They're actually found ten times within chapters five and six. And so this is the primary discussion that Paul is is dealing with for the Galatians. So many times we struggle, even as Christians, with the flesh. But the major thing is that we must not be controlled by the flesh. What controls the Christian is the Spirit of God. Now, as I said before we took the break, I'm going to let you look up the words and so forth that are especially dealing with the sinful nature. But as I said before, as I said before, I think Paul is is just giving them a, a viewpoint of what the sinful nature is. But he's not including everything that would be classified there. He's wanting to help them understand that if that is their life, if that's what they're going after, then they are not walking by the Spirit. Now then, as he goes on here though, he says, but the fruit of the Spirit is, and he starts listing some beautiful words there. Now, I am going to talk just a little bit about, more about those words. Because these are vital words to our lives, and, and these are signs within us that we are walking by the Spirit. When people see us, this is what they should be able to see. The first word in the Greek is agape. So it's it's love, but it's it's Jesus's type love. It's a servant type love. It's the love that will even seek the highest good for our enemies. For our friends. For those that are our loved ones. Personal family even. And so that's the first word he begins with. The second word is joy. It can also be translated gladness. It's the reason for gladness. It's a reason for joy. <laughs> Same word. <laughs> yeah. It's funny, of course, so sometimes, you know, we'll say, oh, here, I'll give you two or three words in English, and they're the same word in Russian on all three times. <laughs> so, but it's that, it's that inner joy that we have because we belong to Christ. 
Because the Christ, Christ Spirit is in us. It's the joy that we can have even during trials. And that's what, you know, we're told in the book of James, you know, you know, even in trials, you know, have this kind of joy. It's not necessarily jumping up and down and, <coughs> you know, Oh, I'm so happy, I'm so happy, you know. It, <coughs> it can be that, but it also is an inner happiness, an inner joy. Now, let me encourage you as a Christian to let that inner joy позволить этой внутренней радости hit your face. Вот как бы сообщать о радости лицу вашему. <laughs> don't be afraid to smile. Вы не бойтесь, пожалуйста, улыбаться. You know, Vlad was here from, from Russia. Вот здесь был Влад из России. And of course, one of the things that he was so impressed was uh, вот uh, that he came to the school and he was to church on Sunday. И когда воскресенье был на собрании, he said, so many people are smiling, they're happy. <laughs> uh, and, you know, that's great. That People need to see that on our face. Now, some people don't smile as much. That doesn't mean they don't have joy at all. It may be partly their personality. But God wants us to have this inner joy. Alright. The next word is peace. And this kind of peace is basically freedom from worry. I don't have to worry about things because I belong to Christ. I know and I understand that He is in control. That he's the one that has my life in his hands. And that gives me peace. If we're not walking by the Spirit, but we're living according to the flesh, we're constantly worrying. We just don't have that peacefulness of heart. And uh, the fruit of the Spirit is, is going to be that peace. Alright, next word. Patience. Suffering is a good word to use to translate it. So that patience are forbearance. Long suffering. The ability to keep on keeping on. So, the spirit. Go ahead. An example. One brother was given an example. Patience is when someone doubts. Вы можете нести так быстро говорить? 
uh, dumps the pile of sand and he says, well, you have to sort it out. And then long suffering is... А долго терпение садись в пустыне песчаной перебирай. This is the kind of thing that just doesn't let us give up. По большому счету это вот то качество, которое не дает нам сдаваться. No matter what happens to us, we stay with Christ because we're walking by His Spirit. The next word is kindness. Sometimes translated goodness. You have goodness, okay. Uh, sometimes it's translated benevolence. А иногда как благотворительность. Христиане должны быть добрыми Christians try to understand what other people are going through and they therefore they're kind. Story was told one time of a young lady that started dating a young man. She didn't think the young man would probably stay with her because she had had some problems with the blood vessels in her legs and her legs were very ugly. And uh, one day she finally, after they had been dating for a while, she said, you're such a kind person. Она сказала, ты такой добрый. Ты так и не сказал ни разу, что у меня ноги некрасивые. Но он говорит, пойдем с мамой знакомиться. Он пошел, познакомил ее с мамой. His mother's legs had been amputated. She had no legs. But he said, but my mother is beautiful. So you see, kindness is that kind of thing that, that the Spirit of God leads us into instead of just looking at the appearance of a person. Это нечто, что Дух Божий дает нам. То есть вместо того, чтобы смотреть на внешний вид человека, мы видим Дух человека и ценим его внутреннюю красоту. И это вызывает нас быть И вот благодаря этому мы проявляем доброту к этому человеку. Now, in the Greek, it uses the word kindness. В греческом языке используется слово доброта. Then it also uses the word goodness. So it uses both of those terms. There are two different terms in Greek. But they essentially mean kind of basically the same thing. Very similar. But one really expresses the, the, the viewpoint of how we look at other people. The other one really expresses more of what we are inside. So they are two different expressions. Is it only one term in Russian? Well, it says here blood of... Oh, goodness and mercy. And mercy. Okay. Well, but that's the next word. You might have it separately in your translation. Well, no, it doesn't translate it mercy. It translates that Greek word as goodness. 
but oh. in your list, you do oh, have mercy, right? Oh, in my list. Yeah, in the English, I think. Let's see. So, yeah. Patience, goodness, faithfulness. Oh, okay. No? Well, our next word is mercy. Okay. And then faithfulness. Well, in the Greek, the next word is actually faithfulness. No, it's not easy. Most of it, in some of the words, it shows as goodness, so as goodness. We have only goodness. Вот следующее слово у них в списке у нас милосердие. Oh, and you have our mercy is, and yours is what? Ours is kindness, goodness, mm -hmm. then faithfulness. Да, но смотрите, вот у них два слова касса благость и доброта. А потом kindness and faithfulness and вера. А вот у нас благость, милосердие, вера. Yes, да. Well, goodness is kind of an old style word. We don't use it very much anymore. So he just wanted to see if someone has modern translation to see what it says in the modern English. Okay. Do we have a modern translation? Well, he's got современ. No, but this is a современ перевод вот там сзади, поэтому давайте посмотрим там. Oh, she's got one of her. И у кого-то уже любовь, радость, мир, благотерпение, благость. Случай Духа – это любовь, радость, мир, долготерпение, великодушие, доброта, верность. Is not, in English. not in English or in Greek. No. In Greek, in the milosердие, no. In that list. I'm not sure why the word mercy was used there in that translation. I mean, they, they may have had some something in mind about it, maybe, but I don't know what they had in mind. But in, in the Greek, it's goodness and faithfulness. Kindness, goodness, and faithfulness. Говорится, доброта, благость и вера. Но вот у нас благость, милосердие и вера. Maybe kindness and mercy in our minds. Maybe so. Может быть, вот доброту у нас заменили на милосердие. Yeah, yeah. And certainly the person who's kind is also going to be merciful. Ну, конечно же, человек добрый будет милосерд. There's no question about that. То есть, это не вопрос. All right, so then the next word is actually faithfulness. It's the Greek word pistis, which is faith. It's, it's the word, it's the idea of trust. Это вот здесь вот развивается идея доверия and trustworthiness. и надежности. So, so the, the, a part of the fruit of the Spirit is going to be us being trustworthy people. То есть получается, что вот отчасти как бы плод Святого Духа в том, чтобы нам быть надежными. So, that's the idea of faithfulness. Вот в этом идея веры или верности. Then the next word is gentleness. Следующее слово это кротость. Can also be translated humble. Или вот смирение можно по-другому перевести. The person who has humility is generally a person who's gentle with other people because they know their own problems. Человек, который смиренный по своей сути, будет кротким с другими людьми, понимая свои проблемы. Very important for us as Christians to be gentle with each other. Для нас, как для христиан, очень важно быть кроткими друг с другом. And then the last word is self-control. И вот последнее слово и это самоконтроль, воздержание. Now again, I want you to understand that it's. It's not just the definition of these words. That's not what he's trying to do. Я бы хотел, чтобы вы понимали, что вопрос не только в значении этих слов. То есть не это он здесь добавил. That's not his main emphasis. Это не главный его приоритет. His main emphasis is that главный приоритет в том, чтобы if you're living by the flesh, 
These are going to be the characteristics of living by the flesh. But if you're living by the Spirit, walking by the Spirit, then this is the kind of fruit the Spirit is going to put into you. And they're all good things. They're excellent things. Uh, and that's, of course, I don't... Uh, that's one passage that if, it, you always ought to have that kind of concept in your heart. And he says against these things there is no, no law. You see, Christian character comes from the power of of the Spirit within us. The, the Spirit seeks to transform us into Christ's likeness. Every one of these words were part of the nature of Christ. And it's interesting to me that love leads the list. Now, here's something I want you to hear very carefully. Every one of you look up at me for a moment. How many of these things that are listed here does the law produce? The law itself does not produce this. The Spirit of God does. Now, let's take law for a moment. Hey, I'm going to make a law. That is. Okay. Every person upon the face of the earth must love me. Okay. How am I going to enforce that? Well, if they don't, I'll punish them. You see, that would not be something that could be forced upon people. It wouldn't be coming from the inner spirit if I told my children, children, every day you have to come to daddy and tell me I love you. That is my law as your dad. And if you do not do that every day, I will spank you. I couldn't force that. That's not, not real love. Love has to come from within them, from their spirit to me. Любовь должна быть чем-то, что из их духа вот, выходит, что как бы это что-то, что им свойственно. Now, if I have a loving spirit toward them, если я имею дух любви по отношению к ним, the likelihood is that they're going to have a loving spirit toward me. скорее всего они будут с любовью относиться и ко мне. God is love. Потому что Бог есть любовь. If God is living in me. His spirit is in me. Part of what's going to come out is love. Because I belong to God. 
Not because God gives a law and says I have to do that. Не потому что Бог дает закон и говорит, что я обязан так поступать. But He's producing that within me. Но Он во мне это взращивает. And to me, that's a very beautiful, beautiful idea. And Paul is saying. По мне это прекрасная идея. Павел говорит. Here's what grace does. Вот что делает благодать. Here's what the Spirit does. Вот что делает дух. It gives us life and peace and love and joy and. То есть дух дает нам мир, радость, любовь и так далее. And so you don't follow the flesh. Вы следуете не плоти. Because the spirit's producing a different attitude within you. Потому что дух будет в вас рождать другое отношение. He's producing something beautiful within you. Он в вас будет рождать что-то абсолютно прекрасное. And he says, and against these things, there is no law. There's no law that says, thou shalt not love. Thou shalt not be patient. Yeah, you laugh because it's kind of silly, isn't it? It's the spirit that produces that. Not law. Hmm. Seems like Paul is talking about law and grace. So he's saying, law cannot produce this. But the Spirit of God living in us does produce it. Yes. Но мы это должны увязывать с тем, что пришел Иисус Христос и появилась новая жизнь. Это именно потому, что, ну вот, наверное, все-таки в законе Моисеева какие-то возможности были у человека, где он соблюдал заповеди но мы должны понимать, что новый завет Получается, что отрицать полностью время закона нельзя. Там же закон, тот, когда, когда он работал, он же давал людям какие-то платы. The law still was given some good fruit in people. It's just like the whole amount of good fruit like, that were brought by Christ. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, the law still said, love the Lord your God and love your neighbors yourself. The law said that. But at the same time that the law said that, how many people really obeyed that law? Or how many people really went to revenge and hatred and eye for an eye, tooth for a tooth? The thing that was going to produce this heart within us was the heart of a person who was connected with God. Now, I believe that there were some people who lived under the law who had that kind of spirit. Two great examples of that. John the Baptist, mother and father. They lived under the law. But they had a goodness about it. And there were a lot of other people like that. Here's what Paul is saying. It's not the law that produces that. It's the Spirit of God and always has been the Spirit of God that produces that. The law cannot save. But Значит, можно, можно посчитать, можно так считать, что в рамках закона Моисеева, so в рамках закона, по, of, uh, Moses, Духом Святым уже тогда праведникам давали по благодати, а не по закону. 
given those feelings and uh, those qualities by the Spirit of God according to grace, not according to the law. Yeah. Ah. Yeah, I think that's right. Mm -hmm. Okay. Continue here. We don't have much more to go in this chapter. И давайте вот продолжим, и еще много чего найдем в этой главе. Verse 24. 24 Those who belong to Christ Jesus have crucified the sinful nature and its passions and desires. Но те, которые Христовы, распали плод со страстями и похотями. When we come into Christ, we crucify our old self. Когда мы со Христом, то мы распинаем себя самого. We make the statement within our lives, no longer is the sinful nature going to control my life, but Jesus Christ is my master and will control my life. So, since we live by the Spirit, let's keep in step with the Spirit. И вот как мы живем, если же мы живем духом, то по духу и поступать должны. He's especially saying this to these Galatians. И он особенно говорит, обращается к Галатам и говорит это им. You see, when I was first with you, I, teach, I was teaching you about Christ and Him crucified and the grace of God. And you accepted that. И вы приняли это. You became Christians. Вы стали христианами. You started walking with the Spirit. And so since we live by the Spirit, let's keep in step with the Spirit. Trying to think of some way to maybe illustrate this. Now let's illustrate somewhat with, with me and Mary Lee. Ну вот, допустим, я и Марили. We've been married for 49 years. Мы уже 49, Well, as of, no, as of June 6th, it will be 49 years, almost 49 years. 6 июня будет 49 лет, как мы женаты. Okay. Uh, a lot of times, we, when we walk, we walk hand in hand. Очень часто, когда мы там гуляем где-то, мы за ручку гуляем. Sometimes we walk arm in arm. Или вот иногда под руку она не держит. Now, here lately, she's been having some trouble walking because her knees have been giving her problems. We're ho hoping that, of course, that will clear up and the procedure that was done will help her. But we've been walking together for a long time. I naturally walk faster than she does. And if I'm selfish, I'll just say, oh, forget about you, I'm going to walk my pace. And if I did that, I would, that would be fleshly. That wouldn't be me having the Spirit of Christ. Sometimes when she does walk, well, one of the difficult parts of, of walking has been going down steps. So one of the things that we do is sometimes if we're going down the steps down toward the underground here, She'll take hold of my arm. I will watch her feet. And I'll try to take the same step at the same time that she does. And then I'll take the next step. Down. The same time that she does. That gives her stability. That helps her go down. We're walking together at the same pace. The flesh says, forget about that. Do what's comfortable for you. The flesh and the spirit work opposite of one another. Your flesh will say, well, I'd like to do what I want to do. 
Я хочу поступить так, как мне хочется. But you never, you no longer, as Christians, live by the spirit. I mean, live by the flesh. You live by the spirit. Но вы как христиане более не по плоти живете, но живете по духу. So, since you live by the Spirit, let us keep in step with the Spirit. Let's let the Spirit lead us. Let's let the Spirit control what we're doing in our lives. Not our desires and our flesh. And then he says, let us not become conceited, provoking and envying each other. If you're not living by the Spirit, you will instead of being an humble person, or a gentle person, you become conceited. And you will Provoke and, and envy your brothers and sisters in Christ. Don't do that. That's what these Judaizers were doing. They were envious of Paul. They did everything within their power to provoke people against Paul. Они делали все от них зависящее, чтобы провоцировать людей и настраивать их против Павла. Они стали тщеславиться и думать, что они чем-то важнее. Думая, что они лучше учителя, чем Павел. So Paul's indication is, и вот Павел говорит, that they were not walking by the spirit. что они не по духу ходят. They're walking by the flesh. Они ходят по плоти. They're walking by the law. <laughs> and they needed to change that in their lives. So, now all we have is chapter 6 to finish. And we can do that easily on Tuesday. Maybe Wednesday. We might be able to finish it on Tuesday. If I finish it on Tuesday, we'll give the test on Wednesday. If not, we'll give it on Thursday. But uh, we don't have a lot more to cover. Okay. Any, any more, at, at least over what we've discussed today, is there any questions or any thoughts or anything that you'd like to share? Может быть, есть какие-то вопросы, мысли или вот что-то, чем вы хотели бы поделиться? А можно еще раз послушать за воздержание? Could you talk a little bit more about uh, the self-control? Self-control? Mm -hmm. Well, it's maybe because you said that, you know, we, like, everything that is fleshly, and what, that is our desire, is, you know, under the self-control. I mean... Воздержание это в смысле в 23 стихе, да? Ну да, это самое последнее. Well, just talk about self-control. Okay, self-control. Mm -hmm. All right. Um, I don't know how, totally how to, how to deal with self-control. Uh, self-control is that which is within us. Воздержание – это вот нечто, что в нас Where we restrain вот, the flesh. вот те вопросы, в которых мы свою плоть ограничиваем. То есть мы контролируем свою плоть и не разрешаем ей нами управлять. Now, how would we do that? Как это возможно? Well, first of all, we would always realize that first we belong to Christ. And secondly, we need to make sure that our minds are controlled by the Spirit. Now, my flesh is always going to send me temptations. 
всегда будет мне подсказать. Какие-то испытания, сатана будет пользоваться моей плотью против меня. But my self-control is going to say. Но мой самоконтроль будет говорить. But here's how I'm going to act because I belong to Christ. Вот как я буду себя вести, потому что я Христов. So we know in our minds. И поэтому мы знаем. What we need to do. Что нам нужно сделать. And we let that control us. И мы позволяем вот нашему знанию нас контролировать. Uh, one of the things that a preacher one time told told me. Вот нечто, что мне сказал проповедник. And actually, he was preaching to teaching a bunch of young young guys. Вот он преподавал у молодежи. He said, guys, there one is one thing that's very strong within us. И вот скорее как все эти места были молодые люди, то есть мужчины. И вот он сказал, что парни, у нас есть такая. That is very true of men. Которая вот характерна именно мужчин. And that is the sexual desire. И это сексуальное влечение. So very often there are temptations that way that Satan will put in our path that we have to control. One of the ways we can do it is by predetermining how we're going to act in certain situations. My daddy talked to me about this too. And he says, Say you're in a situation where you are tempted and some girl is trying to seduce you. If you want to have self-control, decide ahead of time how you're going to handle that situation. You decide in your your mind. I'm going to say no. You're going to decide in your mind. You are a Christian. You belong to Christ. You are the Spirit of God is living in you. So I'm going to learn to say no to those kinds of temptations. And that, to me, would connect with self-control. You decide how you're going to act because you know you belong to Christ. And it's good for young men to know that. And I'm sure we could probably give some examples of, of women as well. Uh, this is one all of us sometimes have, you know. Uh, the temptation to gossip. And we know God, that gossip is wrong. We shouldn't be doing it. So, how can we use self-control to stop that? Как мы можем использовать самоконтроль, чтобы предотвращать сплетни? Well, first of all, know what the Bible says about it. Знать, что Библия об этом говорит. And then pre-decide. Ну и потом заранее решить. If that happens, how am I going to handle it? Как я буду поступать в этой ситуации? One of the ways, for example, that I've handled it. Вот один из способов, как я справляюсь. There's been people that sometimes have come into my office and says, "Do you know? Do you know what so and so has been doing?" But есть же такие ситуации, когда люди ко мне в офис заходят и говорят, "А ты знаешь, что вот тот-то и тот-то сделал то-то и то-то?" And I will say, "Я говорю, no, нет, не знаю." And I don't want to know. И я не хочу знать. Please do not tell me. Не нужно мне рассказывать. Now. The Bible teaches you to go first to your brother and deal it with it with your brother. Then, if you mean my help to help counsel the brother, then I'll be glad to do that. But don't come tell me first. Now, when gossip then presents itself. I have in my heart some ideas of how I'm going to handle that. So I'll use self-control. 
проблемой сплетен, то есть я могу воспользоваться воздержанием. Еще один аспект, который я бы хотел осветить относительно воздержания. It's not self-control because we are so great. Воздержание возможно не потому, что мы такие замечательные. But self-control because of who we belong to. А воздержание возможно вследствие того, кому мы принадлежим. He's the one who's really in control. Вот он это тот, кто на самом деле все контролирует. So I want to know his spirit. I want to know what he teaches me. Я хочу знать. I want to know his word. Его дух, чему он меня научает, его слова. And that will give me proper self-control. И вот это дает мне достаточный самоконтроль. Не знаю, что еще сказать, но вот так. Может быть, вы просто что-то конкретное имели в виду? Нет, это не было сказано, и что в таком месте написано. 